Tape number three. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The author, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, may Allah have mercy on him, said, No, may Allah direct you to obey him. Al Hanifiya, the way of Ibrahim, is to worship Allah alone, making the religion sincerely for him. Allah has ordered everyone with this, and He has created them because of it. Allah the Most High says, I did not create jinn and mankind except to worship me. Chapter number 51, verse number 56. The meaning of worship is to single Allah out with all worship. The greatest matter which Allah has ordered with is Tawheed, which is to single out Allah with all worship. The most severe matter which he forbade is shirk, which is to invoke others along with Allah or besides him. The proof is his saying, the Most High, Worship Allah and do not associate anything with him. Chapter number 4, verse number 36. Explanation from Sheikh Haytham ibn Muhammad Sarhan, may Allah preserve him. Third section, the importance of of studying Tawheed. al Hanifiya, the path of Ibrahim. Explanation. Linguistically, al Hanifiya refers to leaning towards something. Islamically, al Hanifiya is the path which is far from shirk and upon ikhlas, Tawheed and Iman. Allah says in the Quran, the Most High, Indeed, Ibrahim was a comprehensive leader devoutly obedient to Allah, Hanifan, meaning inclining towards Tawheed, and he was not of those who associate others with Allah. The author says that the meaning of to worship me is to single me out with worship. This is the saying of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, when he said, every instance in which the word worship is used in the Qur'an, it means Tawheed. The author, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, may Allah have mercy on him, said, If it is said to you, what are the three fundamental principles which it is obligatory upon mankind to know, then say, the slave knowing his Lord, his religion, and his prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. If it is said to you, who is your Lord? Say, My Lord is Allah, the one who has nurtured me and all of his creations with his blessings and favours. He is the one whom I worship, and there is no other whom I worship besides him. The proof is his, the Most High, saying, All praise is for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Everything besides Allah is created, and I am one of those creations. Explanation Fourth section The Three Fundamental Principles The author, may Allah have mercy on him, began by mentioning the three principles, which are the three questions each person will be asked in the grave. He draws the attention of the reader by asking a question, then he stated the answer. The author may Allah have mercy on him, clarified the first principle that the Lord, the one deserving of worship, is Allah, the perfect and the most high. Then he mentioned the proof for it, which is the saying of Allah, all praise is for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. The Lord is the one who should be worshipped. Explanation of the statement all praise is for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Explanation This is the first verse from Surah Al-Fatiha. It contains the three categories of Tawheed. The verse where it says, All praise, meaning, praising Allah is a form of worship. So this affirms Tawheed al uluhiya affirming Tawheed of worship for Allah alone. The part of the verse where it says, For Allah, meaning, Allah is one of his names. So this affirms Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat. The part of the verse where it says, 
the Lord, meaning affirming Tawheed al rububiyyah the Lordship for Allah alone. The author, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, may Allah have mercy on him, said, The first principle, if it is said to you, How do you come to know your Lord? Say, through his signs and his creations. From his signs are the night and the day, the sun and the moon. From his creations are the seven heavens, the seven earths, everything within them and everything between them. The proof is his, the Most High, saying, And from his signs are the night, the day, the sun and the moon. Do not prostrate to the sun or to the moon, but prostrate to Allah who created them, if you truly worship him. Chapter number 41, verse number 37. Also is his saying, Your Lord is certainly Allah who created the heavens and the earth in six days, and then he rose over the throne. He causes the night to cover the day, which follows with haste, and the sun, the moon, and the stars subjugated to his command. Certainly the creation and commandment are his alone. Blessed is Allah, the Lord of all creation. Chapter number 7, verse number 54 The Lord is the one who should be worshipped. The proof is his, the Most High, saying, O people, worship your Lord, who created you and those before you, so that you may become pious, the one that has made the earth as a resting place for you, the sky as a canopy, has sent down rain from the sky and brought forth therewith fruits as a provision for you. Then do not set up rivals unto Allah in worship, while you know that he alone has the right to be worshipped. Chapter number 2, verse number 22. Ibn Kathir, may Allah have mercy on him, said, Only the one who created these things deserves to be worshipped. Explanation The first principle The author mentions some signs in the universe which prove the existence of Allah and affirm that there is no Lord, no Creator and no one worthy of being worshipped except Allah alone. Then he mentioned the proofs from the Qur'an. As a general principle, every created object is a sign which proves the existence of the Creator, Allah. The author differentiates between his signs and his creation. This is because the signs such as the night and the day alternate and are a stronger proof. The first command of the Qur'an is Tawheed. The first prohibition of the Qur'an is Shirk. This is a general principle. If we accept Allah is the only Creator, this necessitates that He is the only one worthy of being worshipped. The author mentions different types of worship.